In this step, I'm going to be demystifying and defining a lot of these common DCA bot settings and these triggers, these values, these fields, these drop down menus to help you understand what really is behind the DCA bots on three commas and what these values and these properties do. First, we're going to talk about what a bot really does. And most bots place three different orders. There's the base order, safety trade orders, and then the take profit order or the target profit order. Think about it. And we're going to think about this, by the way, in terms of a long bot. So we're buying low, selling high. So let's say that this point right here is where our bot starts a trade. This initial first trade is called the base order. As soon as the base order is placed, then all of the safety trade orders will be placed below this price because depending on the number of safety trades and how far they are, it's going to change, but we're just going to use something really simple for this example. So once the base order is placed, then we're going to see the safety trades layered below. And then of course, we're going to look to take profit. So the take profit order is going to be above our base order price. So all three of these will move together. If the price continues to fall down and hits one of those safety trade orders, then it's going to average down the base order price. And it's also going to average down the take profit price as well. And for each safety trade that happens, it's going to keep averaging it down. So again, base order is the first order. Safety trades are the next trades that are ready and waiting to absorb that negative price action by buying more at a lower price. And your target profit is basically where you're looking to take profit with your bot, whatever percentage that may be. Now, when it comes to safety trades, and I've mentioned this term before, we have to use a percentage to determine how far the safety trades will be placed below your base order. So that percentage is called a safety deviation spread. If you watch the section about smart trades, you'll remember about trailing buy, trailing take profit, and trailing stop loss. All three of those use a percentage-based deviation percentage. So that means that when the price moves whatever percent, then it's going to trail wherever that is going to be, whatever value that's going to be, trailing buy, trailing take profit, or trailing stop loss. So a safety deviation spread percentage is essentially the same thing where you have your base order and you have your first safety, and that distance is determined by whatever you enter for your safety deviation spread. In order for this base order, the safety orders, and the take profit order to be put on the order books, we have to have something to tell the bot to start a new deal. And that's called the deal start condition. So the deal start condition essentially is a trigger that creates a new bot trade or a bot deal, hence deal start and the condition, the trigger. There are lots and lots of different deal start conditions available on three commas. And honestly, they're adding them all the time. Some deal start conditions might sound familiar to you, like RSI, MACD, Bollinger Bands, and some might sound more foreign, like Money Flow Index, Ultimate Oscillator. And there are also custom ones that you can use. You can even use TradingView custom alerts to send signals to your three commas bot to start it, to stop it, to take profit, to do a lot of different options and things like that. And again, all of those come back to that simple idea of what is the trigger that's going to start a bot deal? And that's the deal start condition. You also have to decide what kind of bot you're going to run. Are you going to run a single bot or a multi-pair bot? Single pair bots can only run one trading pair at a time. So for instance, if you're running a trading bot for ADA USDT, which would be Cardano against US Tether, then that means as soon as that bot starts a deal, even though there might be lots and lots and lots of signals that are sent to the bot based on whatever your deal start condition is, it will not open a new deal. It has to wait for the existing open deal to close first. But if you want to open up a bot with more than one trading pair or simultaneous deals per trading pair, you're going to want to run a multi-pair bot. So a multi-pair bot can handle as many trading pairs as you want. And 3Commas actually has a little button that you can click to add all of the BTC trading pairs, all the USDT, whatever the market is. But one thing I mentioned is quite unique about 3Commas. This idea of simultaneous deals per pair essentially means that you can have that same bot for ADA, USDT, but in a multi-pair bot, what I can do is I can enable three simultaneous deals per same pair. 
So contrasted to the single pair bot where it has to wait for that one deal to close in order to open a new deal, the multi-pair bot, as soon as it receives a trigger to fire off a deal for ADA USDT, while that deal is still running, that first deal, maybe it receives another signal while it's still open, then it will generate another bot deal. This can have its benefits and its drawbacks. You really need to step back and think about your strategy before you enable simultaneous deals per same pair. Market versus limit. A market order, if you watched the section on smart trade, essentially is an order that will get filled right away. There could be some slippage depending on the liquidity in the order book. Slippage is basically when there is a large spread between the bid side and the ask side of the order book. If you're having a long bot and you start with a market order, it's not gonna be placed in line below or basically at the highest bid, wherever it is. When you place a market order, it's going to buy and it's going to fill that order from all of the available asking orders up above. So when you're using market orders, there could be slippage, but keep in mind that when you're using the trading view custom signals deal start condition, it defaults to market orders every time. Limit orders, on the other hand, when we think about that illustration with the order book where we have everything below here is the bidding side, everything above here is the asking side, a limit order is going to be placed in line in the order book. While there are benefits to using a limit order to start your bot deals, it depends again on the liquidity of that trading pair. If there isn't a lot of liquidity, isn't a lot of trading action, you might be waiting for some time in order for your deal to completely fill. It depends on the chart. It depends on the market. There is a good time and a place for both the limit and the market options. But for me personally, because I trade on lots of very liquid trading pairs, I default to using market because I want to make sure that my bot starts that deal right away. Profit currency. Profit currency is all about which token you want to take profit in. Do you want to take profit in the base currency or in the quote currency? The base currency, typically when we look at a trading pair, would be like BTC USDT, where BTC is the base currency, USDT is the quote currency. When you're thinking about smart trade, when you have to choose your exchange, your market, and your trading pair, your exchange got it. But the market essentially is the quote currency. You're using your quote currency to buy base currency in hopes to increase the amount of your quote currency. So when you're choosing on your DCA bot, if you wanna take profit in the base or the quote currency, that means that you can actually accumulate not just the quote currency, again, the funds that you're using to run the bot, again, I'm using USDT to buy Bitcoin, I can actually set it so that I'm taking profit in Bitcoin every single time in my BTC USDT pair. So there are lots of benefits to this, but understand that there's always a good time and a place to take profit in either the base or the quote. If you're a diehard XRP fan, for instance, maybe you always wanna take profit in XRP. But the truth is that when the market is really bearish and falling, it doesn't make sense to accumulate a value of a falling token. Therefore, it's better to take profit in something stable, like a stable coin, so that way you're hedging your portfolio. So you have to make these decisions based on the market at hand. So a good rule of thumb I have is that if the markets are bullish, I'm gonna to stick to base. If the markets are bearish, I'm gonna to stick to quote currency. But understand that there are gonna be times where I'm always gonna be taking profit in quote currency because my quote currency is gonna be Bitcoin. <laughs>